So it sounds like what you're saying is that there's an operational aspect and a financial aspect to every company, and we did a pretty good job of teaching people how to become more efficient on the operational side, but a pretty poor job of, of educating them on the financial side of the business and how those two tied together. You're spot on. I mean, yeah. you're exactly right. And every CEO should ask themselves the question, okay, how am I evaluating my people? Are my evaluations strictly product and service driven? Or do I incorporate part of the company's metrics to measure the overall success of the organization? And how did that evolve into the great game of business? Well, what happened was is that having this aha moment, saying, why, are, why do we have two sets of metrics? You know, why don't we just have one set of metrics? Because if we have one set of metrics, okay, then we could create sustainability, then we could create opportunity, then we could create quality of life. Why aren't we looking at the bigger picture? And what I found interesting is, is that I began to realize is that the gap between the haves and the have-nots was not the minimum wage, okay? It was the whole idea of ownership. It was the whole idea of equity, all right? That there was such a concentration on the investors, whether that was the debt of the financial people or private equity or anybody else, public investment, you know, that really saw that the path to incredible wealth is a result of the ownership concept of it. And the ownership concepts spent a lot of time looking at the metrics of the business. They spent little time looking at the metrics of the products and the services, right? They left that to like the CEO that they put in charge. So the CEO is kind of conflicted that they have, you know, like two sets of, of books that they got to worry about, right? And I thought, this is ludicrous. I can, you know, why don't we just bring it all together and, and, and create this incredible productive organization and then allow people to have that, you know, to, to think a little bit. See, when I, when I was running uh, companies, I was focused on labor overhead and material. That's what I was focused on, right? And when you focus on labor overhead and material and work order, you really wipe out intellectual contributions. You wipe out the intelligence of the person on the floor. And what I wanted to do was figure out how to capture that intelligence. A, a great example of uh, command and control is prior to numerically controlled machine tools, I had a radial drill operator. And this guy came in every single day at seven, left at 3.30, and we had an engine mounting support, and all he did was take a radial drill, and then he would make a mounting hole, and we'd send it over to the tractor line, and we'd mount the engine. And every day, this guy came in, 2,000 a day he made. And then we brought in statistical process control, and I actually had a control chart on making the perfect hole, okay? I mean, he'd do 200, then he'd measure it. And if there's any measurement that was out of tolerance, all right, we then had to scope it, and we had to figure out what changed in the process, okay? And so all this guy was doing was to focus on a perfect goal. At 3.30, he went home to Berwyn, Illinois, and he ran a multi, multi-million dollar apartment complex, had more net worth than 26 of my foremen in that organization, had probably more entrepreneurial skills than half the supervisors I had on that shop floor, all right? And yet we came in here and we had him trying to make the perfect goal. We got nothing, nothing from him in terms of innovation, nothing in terms of creativity. And I thought, what a waste of talent. And we have to figure out a new way of designing the workplace where we can capture that intelligence, we can put that into the work order. I mean, new ideas were a joke in the old days. Maybe even today, new ideas are, are I don't know how you can have a new idea if you can't put a financial analysis to the new idea. The biggest problem I think we've had with new ideas in businesses is that we, we, we diminish ideas, okay, because we look at them as being foolish, and a lot of them are foolish, but we have not taught the person how to do an analysis on whether that's an effective new idea or not.